Hans isn't feeling so great, Oscar. You've got to help me treat him. I do not have sufficient knowledge of human mechanics. The human body presents a somewhat complex system, Kate Walker. Okay. Of course I understand. I'll try to find someone competent. Please do hurry, Kate Walker. Hans Vorlberg seems to be running out of steam. As soon as I find help, I'll come back, Oscar. If we go now, Oscar, we're sure to find someone who can help us on the way. Nothing of the sort, Kate Walker. The rest of our journey is long and perilous. What will we do if we encounter no help along the way? I guess you're right. Oscar, I should go try and get help in this town. Sadly, Kate Walker, there is clearly no doctor here. There must be someone. What do people do here when they're sick? Oscar, is this the first time that Mr. Varlberg has had an illness like this? I don't know Mr. Varlberg any more than you do, Kate Walker. I am only an automaton after all. A machine born of creative genius. The feeling of concern I feel for my creator at this precise moment is merely the result of a wheelwork combination designed to produce just this effect. I don't like it when you talk like that, Oscar. Right. I'm going to look for help. Yes, do hurry up, Kate Walker. Malka? Yes, Kate? My friend Hans is very sick. He needs taking care of. Oh, otherwise he's going to die, isn't he? Like Mama. I don't know. He wants to get to the end of his journey so badly. Sometimes that is not enough, Kate. Tell me, do you know anyone who could help heal my friend Hans? Zirkos has special tonics in his bar. No, I need a real doctor. Then you'll have to go to the monastery. Since he was really young, Hans has dreamed of a land called Siberia. Siberia doesn't exist. It's just a story they tell kids to make them sleep. And I'm no kid anymore. I believe the story though, Malka. So, you're going to have to help your friend, Kate. I suppose there are monks at the monastery. That's right. Monks with big black robes. They're really creepy. There's nothing to be afraid of. As monks, they must be good men. And you tell me they can treat Hans? The Patriarch is a stern old man. He won't treat your friend if you don't follow the monastery rules. How do you know that, Malka? He wouldn't look after Mama straight away. Because of the rules. That's why she's dead. I'm sorry, Malka. Howdy, Mr. Sirkos. Good day to you, Miss Walker. How's our friend Hans Svorlberg coming along? Uh, not great news. Ah, well, if I can be of service. Whatever you require, don't hesitate to shout. Tell me, Mr. Sirkos, it was you who took in that little girl Malka into your care, wasn't it? I just couldn't bear to leave a little girl like that. What happened to her mother? Oh, a gypsy woman fleeing God knows what monkey business. <laughs> she got here half dead and crazed with fever. The monks helped her, isn't that right? Uh, you could say that. When they stopped being high and mighty, they took her up to their monastery for treatment. But it was far too late for the poor girl. Them old crows make up their own rules. They'd leave a man to rot rather than get their habits dirty. I don't like him one bit, Miss Walker. What rules are you talking about? 
It's a phony old custom. To decide whether a dying man is actually dying at all, the patriarch of the monastery looks at the patient's face before deciding yay or nay. But how? I don't understand. They kind of make this print of the face on a piece of cloth, you know, like the shroud of Jesus in the Bible. Mr. Sirkos, I'm worried about Hans's health. Dang, it's all my fault. Never should have asked him to do me that favor. What do you mean, favor? No major work or anything, just to get my wind-up Broncos back in again. Oh, don't blame yourself. Hans was already ill before he came to see you. You've got nothing to do with it. Mr. Sirkos, you wouldn't know someone who could treat Hans Varlberg, would you? Oh, not many pill pushers around here. Guess there's always the monks. The monks, you say? People around here say the patriarch of the monastery has healing powers. They also say he's a dingling, a bit of a fanatic, if you know what I mean. Well, whatever. I have no choice. Mr. Sirkos, could you please introduce me to the patriarch of the monastery? Hmm... Want my opinion. Best stay right away. Oh, why's that? Have you ever heard a showman and a priest sing a duet together? They think my cabaret is a den of debauchery, and that I'm a funky old miscreant luring lambs from the altar. Really, Mr. Sirkos, we're not in the 19th century anymore. But we're not too far here, Miss Walker. Believe me, best I don't put my finger in that pie. Do the monks have a telephone? Uh, they don't even have electricity. You'll have to go up there in person, Miss Walker. Then try to convince them to take care of your friend. How do you get up to the monastery? When you go out of here, turn right. You can't miss it. Thanks a lot. It's colder than the North Pole out there, Mr. Sirkos. Do I have to go up to the monastery on foot? There isn't some other form of transportation? Don't even think about it, Miss Walker. Only pony can make it up there is Shank's pony. You're going to have to use your feet, I'm sorry to say. I must confess I don't really understand this shroud story. You'll see, just outside the village, the monks have put this kind of iron box. A box containing a pile of linen sheets. When you put one of these sheets over the face of the sick man, it has the curious property of soaking up all his sweat and juices. So effective it is that all the features of his face can be seen on the cloth. And so the old patriarch looks to this print to form his diagnosis? At least what he can judge is whether that face on the shroud is sick enough to get dragged up those rocks to the monastery and be treated by him. I suppose anybody can take a cloth from the crate if he needs it? You suppose wrong, Miss Walker. One person has charge of the distribution of the said shrouds, and that's Malka. She sure is proud of her position. The Patriarch himself gave her the responsibility, and that kid ain't giving it up for no man, believe me. I've got to go now. Go quickly, Miss Walker, and good luck. Mighty kind, Mr. Sirkos. It's been barricaded. These folks don't like people just dropping in uninvited. <laughs> 